Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. This is uh, Professor Basim Sheikh from Saudi Arabia. I'm presenting a case of uh, Jefferson fracture for the general uh, education and purposes. Well, this is a patient who presented to an emergency room uh, who is a 33 year old male patient. Uh, he gave us a history that he was going upstairs and uh, suddenly uh, he lost. Uh, balance and then uh, fell down when he uh, landed on the ground he hit his head first the patient uh, reported that he felt a severe uh, neck pain and he came on his own to the emergency room when he was seen in the emergency room uh, he uh, was noticed to have severe limitation of neck of neck movement and this is because of his uh, severe pain. Neurological examination revealed no abnormality including motor, sensory and reflexes. The patient was seen at first by the general practitioner in the emergency room where a plain x-ray of the cervical spine was passed as normal. But when the neurological uh, team and uh, specifically the neurosurgeons came to the emergency room they looked very carefully and it was clear that the uh, C1 posterior arch is disturbed now for this they ordered for special view and this is the open mouth uh, view especially to look at the C1 C2 uh, relationship and the odontoid process now we will look at the uh, closed uh, look up into the mouth and we will see the C1 lateral masses the C2 the articular surface between C1 and C2 and the odontoid process of course this is giving a full information about the distance between the lateral mass and the odontoid process and clearly it is showing that there is asymmetry between one side and the other indicating disruption now looking carefully into the articular process of c1 we see that it is not overlapping very closely with the uh, c2 and there is a displacement issue here from the right and from left for this a ct scan was ordered and this clearly showed that c1 is having a disruption or fractures at several sides. This includes the left posterior uh, arch, the left anterior arch, and the right also posterior arch. So we have four areas of disruption in the C1 ring. This was confirmed by having a 3D reconstruction of the cervical spine and as it is noticed here very clearly on a magnified view the odontoid process is not in the center of the C1 ring and there is displacement of the C1 articular surface and not overlying carefully the C2 especially on the right side the distance has been measured and it is not equal on both sides for this we elected to put the patient on a halovist immobilization we have two types of halovist immobilization the first one is this which has uh, pins that attaches to the skull and this is a skull fixation attraction now we elected to use the other one and this is the skin uh, traction so the patient is put in the same hollow vest, but the uh, head is strapped in um, the hollow without having pins piercing the uh, skull. The patient's uh, severe neck pain has been resolved after two days from immobilization. The patient will stay in the uh, hollow vest for the coming at least uh, six weeks and during this we will follow the patient with an open mouth um, uh, x-rays to um, follow on the process of healing 
and that that disruption is not increasing well the management has been a controversy about C1 uh, fracture you can go back to the internet or the books and see the different uh, strategies in summary there have been uh, three ways either the regular cervical collar and that is the heart collar uh, if there is no disruption in the distance between C1 lateral mass as well as the odontoid process now if there has been a displacement and there is no uh, symmetry between the right and the left then the halovist uh, traction immobilization has been advanced few authors have reported on um, operative uh, reduction and fixation of C1 uh, to C2 I um, uh, leave you with this and hope for the best Thank you.